Highway safety for travelers and employees of the California Department of Transportation is one of the department's foremost concerns. It is with this purpose in mind that a continuing testing program is in progress, always searching for new equipment and procedures that will ensure safe traveling conditions for all motorists and safe work conditions for employees of the state of California. It is with safety in mind that the Department of Transportation, Caltrans, conducted a series of crash tests over a two-year period with the purpose of designing a device which would soften the impact of light and heavy passenger cars in rear-end collisions with maintenance trucks, thus reducing the safety hazards to state workers and motorists. The device developed is called an attenuator, which is mounted on the rear of a maintenance truck. It's designed to absorb the impact between the truck and a colliding motorist vehicle. The attenuator is two feet high from top to bottom, seven feet, eight inches wide, and seven feet long, and weighs only 250 pounds. The mounting hardware weighs approximately 400 pounds and is lighter in weight and performs better than the hardware used in earlier tests. Since the purpose of the attenuators is to soften impact, the construction of the attenuator is of primary importance. The sole energy absorbing material used in this truck mounted attenuator is Hexel aluminum honeycomb. The Hexel aluminum honeycomb material was chosen for the following reasons. It is a low cost, lightweight material that can withstand moisture, is easy to work with, and most importantly will collapse to a small volume when impacted. The size of the honeycomb openings is 3 eighths of an inch and the aluminum thickness is 7 ten thousandths of an inch. Also, all honeycomb sections were pre-crushed from nine and three quarter inches to nine and a quarter inches to remove the compressive peak so the material will have a constant stress level from the instant the attenuator is hit. In the initial design, the attenuator structure contained a series of sections or cells of honeycomb material. This design was developed to provide a suitable lightweight truck mounted attenuator for both 4,500 pound and 2,200 pound vehicles. In each test, the car was self-propelled and was kept on line with a cable guidance system and released a few feet before impact. A speed control device on the car maintained the desired impact speed. The ignition was cut off just before impact. The cars and trucks were both in operating condition before the test and were free of body damage or missing structural parts. For all tests, the trucks were parked in second gear and the parking brake was engaged. All were hit from the rear. Our initial test, number 371, was conducted with a car weighing 4,480 pounds. The truck used for this test weighed about 12,000 pounds. In this test, all truck wheels were braked. No attenuator was used in test 371. The car struck the truck at the intended speed and angle. As this slow motion shot illustrates, the car was severely damaged as it hooked onto the truck and propelled both vehicles ahead 10 feet 4 inches. The front of the car was crushed back an average of 26.5 inches and the vehicle could not have been driven or rolled away from the crash site. There was, however, no intrusion of vehicle parts into the passenger compartment. Damage to the truck was relatively light, except for the drivetrain and surrounding parts, and it was still drivable. The test dummy, Willie Make It, was restrained with a lap and shoulder harness, but these restraining devices did not prevent a sharp blow to the steering wheel with the chin, and indentations were made at the bottom edge of the dashboard by the dummy's knees. One of our primary concerns is the safety of the occupants of the impacting car. While the possibilities of injury in any collision are always present, we were working toward reducing occupant impact velocities below 27 miles per hour. This sliding weight is used to compute the occupant impact velocity, that is, the relative velocity at which an occupant will strike the windshield or other interior surface. Occupant impact velocity is determined by subtracting the slower car velocity after the occupant has traveled two feet forward inside the car. 
from the original car impact velocity of 45 miles per hour. For test 381, a 1970 Dodge Coronet weighing 4,260 pounds was used. The truck was parked in second gear with the rear wheels braked. The purpose of 381 was to test the effectiveness or feasibility of a lightweight attenuator. The impact speed of the automobile was 45 miles per hour as per test procedures and the automobile was centered on the truck center line. As you'll notice, the truck moved ahead over 29 feet, which was farther forward than predicted, most likely because it was thrown out of gear after impact. The pitch of the car during collision was seven degrees up, more than twice the pitch of later tests because the Hexel blocks buckled upwards and the lower skin provided a ramp effect for the car to roll up on the lower support. The occupant impact velocity of test 381 was acceptable at 22 miles per hour, five miles per hour below the upper limit of 27 miles per hour. Damage to the car occurred at the grill, which was crushed back six inches and the front doors, which were jammed slightly, but easily opened. There was no parts intrusion inside the vehicle. The truck sustained no damage, and there was no damage to the attenuator hardware, and the area was relatively free of debris. The purpose of test 382 was to evaluate changes made in the attenuator design. In the first interior design, the honeycomb cells were oriented horizontally, it was concluded that this design caused the upward pitch of the car in test 381. As this graphic illustrates, the hoped for results of the test would eliminate the upward pitch of the car. In addition, an aluminum channel beam was bolted to the top of the attenuator with bolts running through to the bottom. Again, this design was used to prevent buckling upward. The car used for test 382 was a 1972 AMC Matador weighing 4,220 pounds. It impacted at 44 miles per hour centered on the truck's center line. The truck rolled ahead 16 feet 8 inches at impact. The occupant impact velocity was computed at 23 miles per hour. 80% of the attenuator was crushed. The car's front end was damaged beyond repair. The attenuator mounting hardware was intact and the surrounding area after impact was relatively clear of debris. Tests 383, 384 and 385 were to evaluate the lightweight attenuator design when impacted by a lightweight car. The three cars used weighed approximately 2,100 pounds. The attenuator for test 383 was the same as the unit used in test 382. In tests 384 and 385, the attenuator was modified to attain better performance with the light car. The same truck was used, parked in second gear with the rear wheel brakes locked. The impact speeds were 45, 43, and 44 miles per hour, respectively. The occupant impact velocity speeds were 29, 25, and 25 miles per hour, respectively. Each of the automobiles was damaged in the front end, primarily the grill. The front doors were jammed slightly but were easily opened. There was no intrusion of flying debris or vehicle parts inside the vehicle, and the area was relatively clear of debris. The attenuator was crushed about 30% in test 383 and about 60% in tests 384 and 385. The attenuator hardware sustained no damage in each test. After this series of three tests with 2,100 pound cars, the attenuator was judged successful for small car impacts.
In Crash Test 386, we return to using a heavier car, a 1972 AMC Matador, weighing 4,200 pounds. Test 386 was conducted to confirm acceptable results with the modified attenuator used in Test 385 and to evaluate a lightweight backup structure. The car impacted the attenuator at 45 miles per hour, centered on the truck center line. The occupant impact velocity was 22 miles per hour. The car crushed the attenuator six feet and the truck skidded ahead 17 feet. The grill of the automobile was crushed back 11 inches. The front doors were jammed slightly but easily opened and there was no intrusion of truck or car parts inside the vehicle passenger compartment. Again, a 1972 AMC Matador was used for test 387. This test was conducted primarily to check the effectiveness of a modified mounting method of attaching the attenuator to the truck. The mounting hardware performed well and sustained no damage, although the attenuator was 90% crushed. The car struck the attenuator on center as desired. The truck skidded ahead 28 feet. The car grill was crushed back 15 inches. The front doors were jammed slightly, but easily opened. There was no intrusion of vehicle parts inside the vehicle after an occupant impact velocity of 24 miles per hour. But the windshield cracked and the roof above the door pillar buckled. Test 388 was a continuation of testing of the redesigned mounting hardware with modifications to allow more crush of the attenuator illustrated in test 387 using a 4,200 pound 1972 Matador. The hardware performed excellently, once again sustaining no damage. The occupant impact velocity was 23 miles per hour after a car impact speed of 46 miles per hour. The truck was not damaged, but the grill of the car was crushed back 11 inches. This successful test proved the capability of the attenuator to handle heavy car impacts. The final test, number 389, used the same truck as in previous tests, and the car was a 1970 Plymouth, weighing 4,270 pounds. The primary purpose of the test was to evaluate the efficiency of the lightweight attenuator while being impacted at a 10 degree angle at one foot off the truck center line. The car struck the attenuator at a speed of 45 miles per hour. The occupant impact velocity was 20 miles per hour. The car penetrated the attenuator seven feet, crushing the grill back a maximum of 24 inches on the right side. The truck skidded ahead 14 feet and to the right about two feet. The attenuator was completely crushed on the left side and the support was twisted and deformed one inch in this successful test. Many positive conclusions were reached with the series of crash tests. Most importantly, the lightweight attenuator does a good job of softening impacts of light and heavy cars in a collision with the back end of a parked or slow moving truck. For the impact test speeds of 45 miles per hour, the lightweight attenuator eliminated truck damage, reduced car damage, and lessened the deceleration felt by both car and truck passengers when compared to impacts with trucks with no attenuator protection. And in addition, the attenuator is much lighter than earlier attenuator designs, making it more convenient to use. And finally, the California Department of Transportation is confident that the attenuator design will reduce passenger injuries and vehicle damage. As a result of this series of tests and subsequent modifications of specifications related to performance and physical requirements, we determined that it was practical and possible to fabricate a lightweight truck-mounted attenuator.